WJCL's Ashley Lincoln breaking down bony maps and attempts to answer if this could have been avoided. That's right. She continues our team coverage tonight and she joins us now with the very latest. Ashley. Yeah, Kevin and Jennifer, we took these boating maps of the area where the escapade was to break down to see if this all could have been prevented. This is the sandbar right here where he was at. Captain Bubba Strickland says in his 10 years of experience, boats getting stuck on sandbars is not uncommon. It's not uncommon for us to go get 30 and 40 footers from that same general area. Just the day after the escapade made landfall on the sandbar, another ship just 100 yards away was stuck on that same sandbar. Strickland's a captain for Towboat U.S. We go out and get quite a number of people that run aground in this area. He says boaters typically rely on these maps from the National Atmospheric Association when charting out into waters. Strickland says even some of the most veteran boaters can find themselves stuck out on a sandbar, no matter the size of the boat. Especially at nighttime, uh, loses a sense of direction. Uh, and if you're depending on the GPS as well to help you, uh, sometimes that can throw you out as well. That map looks confusing to a non-boater, but all those numbers are actually guides to water depths. The most up-to-date map, according to NOAA, shows low water levels where the escapade was stuck. The captain came out and talked to some of us, and we asked him what happened, uh, how could you run into a sandbar like that, and he was the one that told us that it's not charted on their map. There was no way of knowing it was there. One passenger we talked to says the sandbar was there and no one knew it. The sandbar drops off 16 feet, so you're on it before you even know you're there. Strickland says that's why sandbars are hard to pinpoint, because they're constantly changing. They, they shift with the tide, they shift with storms, wind, uh, they'll move inland, they'll grow larger, sometimes they'll disappear. And we asked whether there are any buoys out there to warn bo boaters, and he said no, they are only out there for jetties and channels. And Kevin and Jennifer, this, they said this is just a popular area where a lot of boats get caught on that sandbar out there. Okay, appreciate it. Thanks, Thank Ashley. You. Meanwhile, our coverage continues.